Welcome to the Shortwave Radio Channel, and this is the review of the Deep SDR 101. This is a small, portable, software-defined receiver. And, of course, um, at the standard price, because it usually goes for around 100, 120 US dollars, which gets close with the shipping and everything to 200 Canadian dollars, which I find too expensive. But, for some reason, someone on Amazon, because that's where I bought it, but it's a Chinese seller on Amazon, um, had it for barely more than 100, about 102, 103 Canadian dollars. I thought that was um, okay. I thought, okay. And there's a lot of varying prices out there, by the way. So if you're looking into one of these, look regularly, look at different sources. There's a huge, huge difference in price from one to the other. Now, what is uh, this exactly? Well, it's a long wave, starts at 100 kilohertz, medium wave, um, short wave, VHF, uh, FM. You have air bands, it goes up to 149 megahertz, but yeah, we'll talk about that. Comes with a small um, sheet to start. It comes in a kind of nice little case here, uh, deep leg case. And uh, which is nice. It has a little pen that is extremely useful. Do not lose the pen because you will need it for trying and going on the screen for stuff. And it comes with a telescopic antenna that is extremely flimsy and barely holds straight on itself. So uh, that's something to think about because it uh, falls all the time. It's a little too heavy. Of course, it has a BNC connector on the side. Right now, it's plugged into my MLA30. It does have a uh, earphone jack, has a speaker up front, which is nice. It has this button, which is not only the tuning button, it's it's the everything button. It lets you go through the menus, it lets you change the options of the different menus, and so on. Uh, has a USB port here that you can actually uh, do things. For example, uh, send a configuration file so that you have... Uh, uh, channels already in memory, stuff like that. There's a lot of things that it can do. There's the on-off switch, and there's a charging port here, which is USB-C. And so, this is a metal enclosure, by the way. And by the way, this does come with it also, so if you want to have it at an angle like this. There's one side that is kind of uh, sticky, so you can actually do that little triangle thing to have it on a table at a certain angle that's included in the box. So what do I think of this? Uh, here's the thing. It works, yes, it does. But it has so much and so many flaws that uh, are difficult to really manage through. So, right now it's on WWV 15 megahertz, for example. What happens with this receiver is that the first thing that you'll notice is how to navigate through the menu, which is dreadfully dreadfully difficult it would have been really nice if for example i want the volume i could just click speaker with the pointer or change mode just click the mode that would have been a tremendous help right now this button here that is the encoder um right now is on the volume uh is also when you press the one that goes through the different options. You see here, as I press, I have different options. And when I want to change it, for example, I turned off the AJC here. When I want to change the AM to single sideband, this is how it goes. It is a pain in the butt to actually go through the menus. Um, and the pressure you need to put is more than just a little bit. You have to apply, on mine actually, you have to apply pretty good physical pressure in order to go through the menus. Actually, so much so that when I operate it a lot and change a lot of the different options, I actually have my hands getting tired <laughs> uh, because of all the pressure you have to put on. Of course, there's also the clicking that brings you to some of the different options. Uh, the clicking brings you to a couple of straight options, including the frequency readout that you can actually go to and change. So that is what it is all about in its um, own thing. So difficult, but you can go through the options. 
Uh, battery life is good. There's a battery indicator on the upper left. There's a clock and date, which is nice displayed. I put it on the UTC time. And uh, of course, there's a waterfall and a signal graph like a standard SDR, but it's of limited use depending on what you're going to listen to and the options that you actually try. Because sometimes you'll, if you want to have more sensitivity, like right now, the AJC is off. What's nice about the AJC being off is that you can manage, and now it looks like a very nice standard SDR. And of course, you can change the option of the RF gain to make it more or less sensitive, which was, of course, change also what the. So you see here it receives WWV, and I mean, this thing does receive. It's not that problem. It has, the problem is somewhere else. Uh, in many aspects. So I actually uh, been playing with this without the AGC because the problem with the AGC is that when you get to the AGC and you turn it on, everything kind of gets automatic. Everything gets automatic and then everything gets kind of blown out of proportion and even if you play with the IF gain, you can't really get um, a nice measure of anything. There's also the aspect of um, of um, using it on, say, medium wave. For example, right now, it can't cope with the fact that I'm listening to 800 kilohertz, which is CJAD Montreal. No audio is coming out because it's just overblown, completely, completely overblown. Signal is just making it impossible to listen to. So I turn off the AGC, and even then, look at how it's unusable on, on many uh, respect. I can, of course, go here, turn this down as much as possible, and there are these peaks here. So if I go and go here, look at how these peaks kind of move in a weird way. They're kind of double peaks. So this is kind of very bizarre, and actually, it just doesn't work very well when anything is overloading on it. And you could see it here, definitely on the AM medium wave band, that it's dreadfully difficult to use. So you got to play with the gain, you got to play with the different things, but still, look at all these peaks that appear as like phantom and mirror peaks that, that go in each direction. These are all artifacts of overload and of signal processing gone wild in here so of course there is this because one of the things that you want to do is try to play with whoops you see here uh, how annoying this is i actually want to move on to the rf gain so you can play with it and try to get you know the gain as down as possible on a very strong signal once again, you have to keep that automatic gain control off because you just lose control on, on situations like this. By learning how to use the combination, you finally get at some point a possibility of having a decent listening of whatever signal. Uh, and that I've mastered by using it a lot. And kind of, you know, and like I said, AJC is off most of the time, except if you want to have reception of a weak station then the AGC is almost you have to almost turn it on because it pushes the gain even higher than the highest that you can get here on the IF gain setting so you see how awkward and how difficult it could actually be to operate this thing simply with the fact that it's so awkward and difficult to find depending on how strong the signals are where you're uh, gonna listen to something and of course it overloads like crazy. And what happens with overload? Well, on the overload, what's gonna happen is, so for example, here I'm on 15770, and uh, which seems to have no audio. Let's go on 15825 WWCR. So you can play with a gain, you know, get a, a decent gain. As a matter of fact, I think that 12160 was coming in this is I'm going to show you here exactly what I mean when it overloads 
listen to the audio. There you go. You lost the audio. Now, you might say, well, you push down the gain. But, no problem. Shortwave signals go up and down. Sometimes, you keep the gain at a decent level here at the station. But, with the up and down of the signal, this is how it's going to sound. Because sometimes the signal is going to be very strong and you're going to actually lose the audio because it overloads. If you put it down too weak, when you have these drops in the signal, sometimes you'll lose the station. So it gives you an idea of how this thing performs weirdly and is could be designed better. Um, which is sad because, honestly, what is interesting in this is that... It's a nice little device, and I do enjoy playing with it. For a hundred bucks, I'm not, you know, pissed off or anything. I'm actually pretty happy with it. I was expecting something that wasn't that great because I've seen the reports everywhere. Because I was expecting something not really good, I'm actually pleased because it's better than I expected, yet at all these flaws that I just talked about. Now... Uh, the precision and frequency is great. That is amazing. I mean, it's up to, uh, you know, one hertz. And, and I mean, it is very, very precise. There's no calibration needed or anything. It's really good. Single side main tuning is fun. It works well. Um, have, you know, got no problem with that. It really, really is nice to tune around in single sideband. I wish one thing, that the um, bandwidths could be changed. They're just all by default. So... When you actually go and want to change bands, so AM is 9 kilohertz, wide FM 192, or stereo FM, USB is at 2.6, LSB at 2.6, and CW has an 800 uh, hertz filter. Now, they're not badly sh chosen on, on single sideband and CW. They're a little, it's a little wide on, on AM. I would have wished maybe 6. Uh, to remove adjacent interference from stations really close by. Better, I would have liked to have a choice which is not available. And that's where it comes to this. If I want to listen to 147.015, uh, which is a local repeater, uh, the problem with the local repeater is that this is 2 meters. You need narrow FM to be able to listen to that. Unfortunately... It's not offered. You have only 192 kilohertz wide, which is make, makes it useless on anything else than listening to um, the FM broadcast band. So, you know, if I put uh, CKUT 90.3, and um, here we go, and I just uh, make sure that I'm on the... There we go. And stereo. So you see here. Or you can listen to the airband. That works fine also if you um, want to go to the airband. The uh, AM filter is okay for that. So the airband will work um, fine on this uh, radio. So, But forget the VHF range apart from that because it's wide and you need narrow for all the communications there. Uh, so, um, apart from that, of course, battery life is good. Um, it really gives a lot of time. The display is nice. Um, it's a little, you know, you need to have that little, uh, pin because I use actually mine here. This is a pin that I have actually that is different. Um, because you, with your fingers, you will actually, if I do this and you start, I want to have 15 megahertz with my fingers it might actually, in this case it worked, but often you'll be off because your fat fingers might not be on the right frequency or the right uh, button. So a pen is absolutely required to have more precise. Uh, what this radio needs is an improved uh, front end that can handle stronger signals better. If it had that and it had a maybe a you know, like there's an IF gain here, but a several position um, maybe attenuator, maybe. This would maybe fix a few of the flaws that this radio had. And of course, if you had touch control over every functionality here, 
it'd be much better than this awkward way of going through the menus uh, in general. Uh, you see here the input. What's that? Well, the input, of course, is you can go into... If, if I put 15, I can see 15 kilohertz, 15 megahertz, and so on, uh, depending on what I want to do. If the G is for gigahertz, but you can't go into gigahertz. Uh, so you choose whatever you want. If I put 15,000 kilohertz, then I'm at 15,000 kilohertz for WWV. If I go and I put 15.000 for 15 megahertz, I can press a megahertz. So that's a nice combination of ways you can actually uh, put this. Of course, uh, the, the different options are available for the color of the waterfall display and so on. The span, problem with the span is when you put the span too wide, there's all sorts of weird artifacts. So it's uh, I, I kind of keep it to a rather smaller span of um, like this, which is more manageable. You see what's on each side about, you know, 60, 70 kilohertz, and that's fine. And here at the bottom, you have also the an, an option, which is to change this in a different way, but I don't see the use of having this rather than having the standard waterfall here. Uh, you can't tap on the screen to go to a signal, so don't think that, oh, there's a signal here. I want to tap. Nope. You're going to have to tune. Uh, that's the way it works. And of course, you can tune with um, up to the precision of one hertz. So you can tune and go in to see what signal that is by doing so like this. So I uh, just told you all the flaws of this thing. And um, with the telescopic, it still overloads. So because you're going to say, well, yeah, what, 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 if I don't put an, ex an external antenna on it, you still get overload with the telescopic and it actually makes it a little deaf on some frequencies telescopic isn't that great in the performance it is on short wave medium wave long wave becomes rather deaf and full of weird artifacts when you try to tune in um so even if you go here you'll notice that there's tons of spurious signals everywhere below um you know one megahertz and as you go lower and lower and lower, it's less and less usable uh, to listen to anything. So that's pretty much what I have to say on this device. Uh, if you have questions, you can leave it uh, below. I like the fact that it shows you what band you are in. So it says here medium wave. If I put uh, 100 kilohertz, it's going to say long wave. As you see here, it's full of spurious signals on 100 kilohertz. Um, if I put 15,000 kilohertz, going to tell me, oh, shortwave, and so on. That's kind of cool. Uh, colors are nice. The screen is nice. And uh, brightness is, of course, you can set the brightness right now. It's at 54. So it's uh, halfway, pretty much. So, but, so uh, if you buy this, uh, you know what? It's at your own risk. Uh, and it's because you have money to spend and you want to play with something unusual. If that's what you want, that's okay. You'll have something you're going to have fun with. Uh, because even with all its flaws, you can still have fun with it. You want this because, oh, this is a portable SDR. It's going to be so cool, and I'm going to use this as a standard radio. Forget it. This is not replacing a portable receiver at all. Buy a portable receiver. I know the attraction is, is there, and I know that we're all kind of waiting for that affordable portable SDR receiver that we could have in our hands that would work great. There are a few options more expensive though. Uh, but, um, you know, it, it could be improved and, you know, I would see maybe that company making one like this, but making it an upgrade version with a few more, um, you know, like, you know, an RF uh, attenuator and, and a few things to help the AJC work better um and, and things like that so let's hope maybe uh they could come up with a version two of this that could improve everything uh maybe they'll hear and or even review review some of the videos like this one and say hmm how can we improve upon it but um it's really not ready for anybody that just wants a radio don't buy this you're gonna have a hard time tuning it you're gonna have a hard time just playing with it and uh just buy a standard portable instead. 
If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.